as I had said in our first um, session, which was on Friday, choosing the right career is a significant decision that can shape your future and overall decision in life. Exploring different career options is an exciting journey that allows you to discover your interests, skills, and passions. Whether you're in school, college, or a recent graduate, there are numerous paths you can consider. Today, we are here to invite you about nine very interesting careers. I hope you benefit from this. Our director, Dr. Vidya Satish, would now like to to you. I am Rupal Vora, coordinator of the counseling program at SIS College of uh, SIS Institute of Comprehensive Education. Over to our director, Dr. Vidya Satish. Uh, thank you, uh, Rupal. Very warm welcome to all the students who have uh, assembled here today to listen to the uh, career uh, panorama. Uh, we take great pleasure in welcoming each and every one of you, the students, the staff, and all the audience, since we've gone live on YouTube, uh, to learn this uh, session. And as Rupal Man said, I think choosing a career is something very important. And getting uh, insights in different careers uh, in a platform like this is going to make your decision making uh, really easy. So we welcome each and every one of you. Uh, to this session and we hope that uh, the students benefit like uh, the last batch we had we had very good uh, topics that were dealt the same manner we the presentations today by our counseling students has been planned in a manner that uh, you will really benefit very, very interesting careers i've seen each one of them and um, you will understand there that these are very contemporary these are modern um, uh, careers that you will probably be interested in along with some traditional careers also so i take this opportunity to welcome each and every one of you and all the viewers of youtube so that you can benefit from this career fair and my best wishes to my counseling students who will be discussing who will be presenting with address to you all all the best everybody So my question is, you are the future of India. I remember when I was your age, India at that time, if you measure the social wealth in the country, it's measured by GDP. India was 100 and something in, at that time. Today, India stands at number five. Ahead of us is the US, China, Germany, and then comes off. And you are, your, your turn is coming up with that text. Uh, so good luck. How are you going to take it? By choosing a career that you love and do well at. If we all do that, India will progress very, very rapidly. So, uh, how, do you, how do you choose? Again, when I was the audience, it's something, what you want to do when you grow up, what you want to do in life, I had no idea. Now, to an extent, I barely knew whether I wanted science or I wanted you know, uh, But this presentation is our duty for our generation to, to guide you. And this is an attempt to give you some guidance presenting different career options, uh, tell you what it is like for each of these careers. You can, you can, you can get a sense whether it's something that you'd like or don't like. What's very important is when you listen to these presentations is that you write down, if you really like a particular career, why you like it. Right? As you go through life, the career that you want will keep changing. But the reasons why you like those careers, that will remain with you for life. So it's just important that you write, write down why you like the career. Also, uh, we had the chat. So while the presenters are presenting, if any questions come up to mind that you want to answer, we write in the chat. What we'll do is after the presentations are over, go to the chat and answer your questions. Also, if you if something comes you later, right? So question comes up later. At the end of this presentation, I'll show you an email address that will be active till the 20th of this month. Write us your questions and we'll do our best to answer you within 24 hours. All right? So with that said, I'll turn it over to Sita, is who's going to cover, start with a really fun character, one of the performing arts, early Bollywood stars, like, do you want to be like them? And what does it take to become one of those people, right? Over to you, Hitika. Thank you so much, Anil, for this lovely introduction. 
So yes, good evening, students. My name is Ritika Dansingani, and my topic is performing arts. So, students, first I would like to ask you all that how many of you like dance, music, acting, drama? You can answer this in the chat box. And students, do you know that these creative activities can be converted into your career and what it is called? So let me tell you. Next slide, please. Hello. We can hear you. Please yeah. continue. Yeah. So, form of creative activity that performed in front of an audience, such as music, dance, acting, is called performing arts. Next slide, please. Hmm. So, students, let's see the job responsibilities included in performing arts. As a dancer, you have to do choreography, maintain your physical health, and keep yourself updated with new dance forms. As a musician, you have to practice and master musical art. You have to keep yourself updated with new musical styles and keep improving yourself continuously. As an actor, you have to memorize the lines, lines understand the character properly, and keep rehearsing. Next slide, please. Now coming to skills. So what all skills are required in the field of performing arts? As a dancer, musician, and actor, you should have soft such as clear communication, creativity as in you should think something out of the box, collaboration with your team members, time management, and observational skills. Coming to technical skills, you should have acting techniques, stage management, dance techniques, injury prevention. You also have to learn music theory, do record production, and voice modulation. Next slide, please. Coming to scope of the job, as a dancer, you can work in television and reality shows, dance companies, dance education, Bollywood and film industry. As a musician, you can work in Bollywood and film industry, music education, or you can go to devotional music or concert and live performances. As an actor, you can go into Bollywood, web series, advertisement, acting schools, television, and short films. Next slide, please. <laughs> So let's see career prospects. So students, as a dancer, you can teach dance to students. Then you can open your own fitness and wellness industry, or you can work as a choreographer, contestant, or background dancer in Bollywood and film industry. As a musician, you can do playback singing, or you can take part in musical shows, or you can create your own YouTube channel or post and post your work there. As an actor, you can get lead role or supporting role according to your skills and experiences in advertisement and Bollywood and television. Next slide, please. Coming to work environment for dancers, musicians, and actors. Yes, they work on different sets at different locations. So yes, shows and travels. Then they also work in reality shows, live concert, auditorium, studios, theater, academies, and schools and colleges. Next slide, please. Now, most awaited part, uh, uh, slide, salary and perks. So, approx salary in India is 3.2 lakhs to 12 lakhs per year. It goes to crores for Bollywood and television industry. And of course, compensation is based on skill, experience and performances. Perks, they get a lot of recognition and fame, appearance fees, invitation to many events, concert tours, award, high profile projects and of course, job satisfaction. Next slide, please. Now coming to qualification students. So after 10, there are many diploma courses that you can do or you can complete your junior college, bachelor's and after that if you want, you can go for your master's or PhD. Then there are many specialized performing arts schools and private academies you can join. Next slide please. Here are the names of few special school of performing arts like IT School of Performing Arts, Mumbai, Fees and Rex, Eligibility is 10 plus 2. Then NMIM School of Performing Arts, Fees again in Rex, Eligibility is 10 plus 2, 50% aggregate and 12th in 12th and audition. Then there is the MCP Academy that offers you diploma in filmmaking and diploma in screenplay writing. Fees again in Rex and eligibility is HLC pass. 
Next slide, please. So students, here are the top 10 institutes for performing arts, like University of Mumbai School of Performing Arts, Whistling Wood International Mumbai, Lalit Kala Kendra, National School of Drama. Students, if you want, you can take screenshot of the slide. Next slide, please. So students, now I would like to show you all a glimpse of how performing arts looks in this short video. So yes, students, these are my references. You can take screenshot of this as well. Now, I would like to hand it over to my friend Anil. Thank you, students. Hi, thanks, Sitika. That's looking for the um, <clears throat> So there are careers that are very heart-centered, centered around emotions. And Sitika's Performing arts is a perfect example, a very emotion-led, heart-centered kind of area. So then I take you to information technology, which is a very head-centered technology, where you have to, you have to think of your head uh, throughout this area. Right? So welcome to the areas in information technology. So I think... <clears throat> okay. I'll give you an overview. I apologize for the delay. The slides are not changing as quick as the others. So then if for these frequent pauses, please... Okay, um, I'll give you an industry overview. Uh, technology is everywhere. It runs our lives. Whichever industry you go to, who uses technology. In fact, that technology has progressed so much that the smartphone that you're holding in your hand is many times more powerful than the first com the computer that sent the first man to the moon. So just imagine, we just use it for WhatsApp and Instagram. Pay scales and job demand will continue to be growing at a rapid pace. As you will see from the pay scales, it's so much higher than any other you see today because the demand is so high for technology people. Now, does that mean if you are not very technology oriented, you have to give up on your dreams if you want to be an artist or you want to be a musician? No, you can have dual skill sets and that is really valuable. So, for instance, an artist could be a game designer or a musician could be a music producer, right? Or a sound technician. So you can do these dual skill sets and you're much, much more valuable than a person who only technology, right? So don't give up on your dreams. Next up, Okay, this is typically what happens in, uh, in technology, the, the life cycle of a project, right? How do things get done? Uh, you have the client that sits in the center, and these are the filters I'm going to introduce to you two, and, and you can see the different jobs that are there, right? So the client talks to the analyst and tells him what needs to be built, what software needs to be built. For example, a hot project will tell the analyst what kind of software needs to be built to monitor the heart, right? The analyst will talk to the programmer and translate that into the program language in terms of what models need to be built, what, what specifications do they need to have, what they need to do. It. The programmer will take, take a look at that and he will write the software and it to the administrator. The administrator then is installing the software on the system and running it every day. So that's what he does. And the, the software then gives the results back to the client. And of course, over all this, you have the manager who sits over the whole process. Next slide, please. Now, the different years, what are their jobs like? Right? What are they like? Starting with programming. 
And that was is actually most people don't realize that programming is actually a very creative and uh, skill set that demands a lot of very analytical thinking and it's very detail oriented. Right? Every time you're talking about the word property, it means programmer has not thought it was because he wasn't detail oriented enough. Right? It's constant learning for life because technology has changed so much that all your life will never be bored. There's always something new to learn. So it's a long, exciting journey. The administrator. <clears throat> He has a very interesting story. He has come every single day. It's rather repetitive. He has come every single day and do the exact same uh, job to the exact same standard. Right? If he makes a mistake once, everybody talks about it. For example, the state of the Bombay Electricity Company, if he makes one mistake one day and the life walks like for the entire city, it will be all over the news internationally that Bombay like that. But every evening you go home and the life on, you never even think of this person. Right? So that's the kind of quality of your work that that you have performed day after day after day, right? So, uh, and it requires for you it requires to be very detail-oriented, patient, and very, very low error rate. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, the analyst. The analyst is talking to the client, could it be a surgeon or it could be you know, a rocket scientist or whatever. So as he has to understand and he has to learn the client's uh, industry and, and, and he's able to talk intelligently to a client as requirements, right? Then after that, he, uh, he has to talk to the programmer. So now he has to talk to the programmer. He has to understand what the programmer uh, is talking about when, when, when he asks questions. If communication skills have to be really good, your both written and oral communication skills have to be really good. Not only that, your interpersonal skills have to be really good because when people misunderstand, there's a lot of upset uh, people that you have to deal with. And so, handling people is a very important part of your job. Right? You have got to be able to learn very quickly because today you could be talking to a doctor, tomorrow you could be talking to a rocket scientist. Right? You have to be able to learn things very, very quickly. The manager, in addition to all the normal managerial skills that you have in terms of people having running projects, your time management, you also have to understand technology very deeply to guide your team. They get stuck. If they have questions or they can't just, they don't know which way to go, you have to be able to guide them. Next slide, please. The job market. Like I promised, the market, the salaries, they start at 30,000, they could go into multiple lakhs a month. Like most people talk in terms of lakhs per year. Here you talk in terms of lakhs per month. Uh, an example is the top of IIT IIM was hired by Facebook a few years ago, and he was started off fresh as start off at four crores average. Right, so the salaries can really go high because the demand is global. The client will be sitting anywhere in the world and is prepared to pay for top talent anywhere in the world. Your work-life balance depends on the industry. If you're working Working for, let's say, pharmaceutical or utilities, it's generally nine to five jobs, those are very steady industries. But in fast-paced industry like gaming or finance, you can work long hours and it can be very, very challenging. Right? But the environment, however, is usually very structured. You know in advance what you need to do and what you're going to be doing. Priorities change, but you have a pretty good idea of you know your, what your you know, workday is going to look like. Next slide, please. Education, how to get there? Science, uh, so physics, chemistry, math, junior bachelors, uh, a master's is always better like in any industry. There are two streams in India. One is called general IT, which is they write business software for companies and industry. And the other is system software, or science, where you, you write software to, to control robots or, or smart controls that manage, manages the electricity grid. The cost of college is about 50,000 uh, with a 45% bar. Uh, if you go to elite colleges, then you have to do IIT or JE, and this, the cost of college goes into the lakhs, but you get paid higher too. Right? And for a job, when you go for a job, they usually give you IQ tests, program the quizzes, sample code to test. But what brings you about this particular industry is even if you're you know, in class A, class 9, class 10, class 7, you can easily enter the industry. You don't need to wait for a degree for college. You can download a free kit from the internet. Build your own mobile app. It starts small. A little every single time you look at the screen, there's a little baby that starts smiling and laughing. As you look away from the screen, the baby starts crying. The, your phone app attacks your eyes everywhere it's looking, right? You could write a small app, it won't take very long, and 
you can build up from there. So now you want to go for a job, get show some of the app is there in the store, and you see your skills and immediately hire you, right? So it's a really easy to get or even to test whether this is for you or not. You can go ahead and test it. And some people once they try it, just get hooked. Next slide, please. So let's, uh, for your reference, I'll give you a uh, take a screenshot. I've given you a web link where you can download one of these free tips. So good luck to your life. I will now hand you over to Bhumika, uh, who will cover journalism. Uh, journalism in a, in a democracy is a lifeblood democracy. If there's no journalist who feeds free spirit, there is no democracy. Right? And so Bhumika will cover this particular area, which is very interesting. Over to you, Bhumika. Thank you so much, Anil, for such a wonderful presentation on careers in IT. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Monica, and I'll be talking to you about what it's like to have a career in journalism in India. Next slide, please. So soon, you hear the word journalism. What the word that comes to your mind? For some of you, it might be media. For some of you, it's news. And for some others, it might be the names of some of the most famous news anchors of our country. And all of these words fall under the brand term of journalism. But what exactly is journalism? So journalism mainly involves researching and collecting information on various incidents and facts that take place around the world using different methods like interviewing people and putting these findings to prepare news for print, digital and broadcast media. Next slide, please. So let's look at the job responsibilities of a journalist. So when you become a journalist, one of your main responsibilities will be gathering, analyzing, and reporting on news and current events using various sources and media. You'll also be responsible for interviewing key persons like witnesses and sources to obtain information. You'll be responsible for conducting research for news stories, attending press conferences and other important events, verifying various sources and facts, Staying up to date with privacy and defamation laws, networking and building contacts, and writing, editing, and submitting articles or copies will be some of your other responsibilities as a journalist. Next slide, please. Now, students will look at the scope and career process for journalism. So, journalism has a wide scope in India, especially considering the fact that we have a very large population to cater to. We speak a variety of regional languages. So you can work in each of these different regional languages as well as we have news delivered in these languages, like we have news delivered in Marathi, in Gujarati. So there's a lot of scope there. And when you become a journalist, you have a couple of options and medias that you can work in. So there's print journalism, where you work with newspapers and magazines. So you can work as a reporter, a feature, a columnist, or an editor. Or you can get into broadcast journalism, where you work with radio and television stations. So you can work as a news anchor, a reporter, a correspondent, or a producer. And you also have the option of going into digital journalism, which has seen a lot of growth in recent years thanks to the internet. So here you get to work with online publications and news websites as a digital content creator, a news website writer, a news blogger, or a video journalist. Next slide, please. And uh, journalism has a couple of specializations as well, one of which is investigative journalism. So here you, a single, uh, you take a single topic of interest and do in-depth research and reporting on that specific topic. For example, you can come and report on serious crimes and corruption that goes on locally around the world or with the specific industries. You can get into photojournalism, where you can test stories through powerful images and photos. There's sports journalism where you get to cover big sports events, matches, and you get to interview athletes and analyze sports news. Or you can get into business journalism where you will be reporting on the economy, the finance, and corporate news. Next slide, please. So students, these are the skills required for journalism, almost all of which can be learned and improved with time and practice. So as a journalist, you will require good writing skills, you will need good editing skills, good research skills, interviewing skills, critical thinking is very important, you will need good communication skills, adaptability, digital literacy, you will need good listening skills, networking, time management, and rationality. Next slide, please. 
Now, students, let's look at the work environment for a journalist. So, broadly speaking, as a journalist, you will either be working uh, from office, so the desk journalist in newsrooms or uh, offices, or you will be working as a reporter on field. So, the environment is very fast paced as news is unfolding 24 by 7, and there's high pressure and strict deadlines as the news has to be delivered at a specific time every day. So on average, as a journalist, you will work from 40 to 45 hours a week, but you may be required to work all time or at odd hours, depending on your new stories and projects. And you may also be required to travel for work. Next slide, please. Now, students, let's look at the salary and pay packet for journalists in India. So as a beginner journalist, you can earn an annual salary of up to 3 lakhs to 6 lakhs per annum. And the figure goes up depending on the educational qualifications and the work experience. So a journalist with about five to ten years of experience can earn up to rupees ten lakhs per annum on average or more. And of course, the quality varies depending on the industry, the nature of the job, and the your organization. Next slide, please. Now, students, these are the qualifications required to become a journalist in India. So a so if you want to pursue a career in journalism, you will require a bachelor's degree in journalism, writing, English, or related field. And these are usually three or long undergraduate degrees. I have listed some of these here. You can take a screenshot of this slide for your reference. So you can pursue a degree in BA in journalism, BA in media studies, and Bachelor of Mass Media to name a few. Slide, please. So students, if you're interested in pursuing a career in journalism, these are the top colleges for journalism in India. Again, you can take a screenshot of this slide for your reference. And to name a few, you can apply to St. Xavier's College in Mumbai. You can apply to Institute of Mass Communication in New Delhi. There's Christ College in Singapore and Zimbabwe's Institute of Media and Communication in Pune. Next slide, please. So to give you a glimpse of how the world of journalism works, I, have, I would like to end with a short video on how journalists find news in today's time and how it has evolved over the years. In the past, reporters, in the past, reporters found the news by talking to sources. It doesn't say anything apart from the fact that it won't say then as correspondents at news agencies on the ground and newspapers. Nowadays, they still use their traditional and trusted sources. But there are new tools to find out what people are talking about online. When something big happens in the world, People post on social media. New systems crash. Correspondents around the world send alerts. Journalists call to find out what's going on and send teams to the scene. Reporters talk to eyewitnesses and emergency services. Gather interviews and statements. Here come the riot police. Come to water cannon. We're about to start. Or send the material for other parts of the newsroom to use. So the point of journalism hasn't changed. But there's so much more information out there now that journalists use different tools to tell people what's happening. So these are my references. Thank you so, so much and all the to all the students in the audience. I would like to invite my colleague Lahushri to now talk about another interesting career. Over to you, Lahushri. Okay. Uh, hello, students. Uh, thank you so much, Monica, for that wonderful uh, presentation. Uh, before I start, students, I'd like, I'd like to tell you that uh, I we noticed that some of you had raised hands. So whatever your doubts are, please put it in the chat box. Uh, make sure that you mention what career um, 
or career related question is it so that at the end of the session we will look into it and we will try to answer all your questions okay thank you so much uh, now let me begin with uh, another interesting career that is financial analyst in india so when we uh, talk about financial analyst we need to understand what is financial analysis right so if i ask you like think about it what is the one department or what is the one aspect of uh, every company that is there but it is not subject to that one company it will be it exists in every single uh, organization or every single business that is out there the very important aspect of every single business and that is finance finance is a uh, one department that exists in every single organization that exists in the market so financial analysis is the a uh, process in which you know it helps to examine a company's performance not just their finances but uh, the current times but from the past in and which help to predict the future of their um financial state and also the economic environment uh, not only of the company but of the other companies with which they are doing the business and they, it also helps to arrive at a decision or a recommendation that is necessary for the company okay <clears throat> so let's see uh, what responsibilities of an analyst right so first of all a financial analyst is the person who takes care of financial assets in any company that is there okay so some of the responsibilities that you might need to do if you want to become a financial analyst analyzing financial data and uh, trends and not only you have to analyze but also you will need to uh, provide the company with your insights and recommendations that would help them to make more profits uh, they you will have to evaluate the financial health of the company uh, you can you will also need to create financial models and you will need to present it for the of the company's uh, employees as well as the other uh, companies that would need to do the business with them uh, you will need to prepare financial reports for management uh, there is monetary economic and financial news and stay informed about the market trend and you will need to inform others as well so that they can take decisions accordingly right so now moving on to scope now as as i mentioned that finance exists in every single business so there is a wide range of employment opportunities that you can get as a financial analyst you can work in a uh, finance sector you can work in a banking sector there is corporate finance firms that uh, offer you jobs there's uh, other government agencies that will provide you jobs then there's certain specialized as which financial analyst can work in for example you can only work with risk analysis or part of the work or you can work in portfolio management you can work as more of um, in just financial analysis and planning in general for a company that is uh, you would need to do analysis and modeling now as a financial analyst you will have expertise over certain various tools and methodologies which a layman might not be used to or may not have the that much knowledge of so you will have to uh, work with financial ratios and trend analysis which we will learn in your courses right uh, you will also need to create complex financial models and that would have to predict scenarios um, and predict outcomes like if you take a certain decision you, what outcome would come out of that in terms of finance of a company you will have to do that you will have to you will help them in strategic planning in budgeting of the company and also in various decision making processes there risk, man risk management uh, area there is a specific area specialization where you can do risk analysis where you can uh, help the other company and the employees there to identify what are the potential risk in a particular project you can also help them to develop ideas and our strategies that would minimize the risk and go ahead with the project okay this is the scope move on to what is the need for a financial analyst so as we saw uh need for financial analyst that there is data analysis and interpretation you would you would be need for their strategic decision making process the investment management you will have to help the uh, your clients or your company to uh, make sure that their investment is right they are making good profit their money is going in the right place all these things are like uh, financial analysts guide the company in all this process and also during economic uncertainty uh, so students as we all experienced covid right so during covid every aspect and every sector of the world was disturbed uh, that included 
bank as well so during such difficult times uh, when the financial uh, market is very unstable financial analyst help the company to navigate through the process and how to survive such difficult times or how to make the best out of whatever uh, they have whatever sources they have they will have to make best out of it right so for, to help uh, during such economic uncertainty times is also one of the need for financial analyst so now that we know like in a very basic manner what is the how like what is a financial analyst now let's see how to become one. so qualification wise we have to um, like minimum requirements uh, of a bachelor's degree um, in finance or accounting economics or any related field uh, which is typically required for you to start off in the field or in the as a career as a financial analyst There are certain advanced degrees that are recommended for you to get so that you have better career prospects, such as an MBA or a master's in finance. Um, then there are special certif certifications available, such as the Chartered Financial Analyst. Uh, that all is also beneficial. And there are Chartered Accountants as well, who can also work as financial analysts in multiple companies. there are a set certain set of soft skills soft skills as well that you would need to become a good financial analyst right so you will need to you need the ability to analyze large sets of data and make meaningful conclusions out of it there should be effective communication uh, not just the verbal and written communication but as mentioned that you will be dealing with complex uh, concepts that everybody might not be aware of and you have expertise to that you need to uh, manage Communicated to the chairman so that they understand it in an easy way. So, uh, complex financial information should be easily conveyed to the other people. Then there should be knowledge of legal language. You will have to put your attention to detail when you are making reports and you are making financial uh, strategies. There is accuracy that will be very important. And also, you would need time management skills because there will be a lot of deadlines that you might need to meet. Management of time and managing your work within given deadlines is very important. So now, students, you can take a screenshot of this slide. These are certain um, training institutes in India that offer uh, MBA programs or other important uh, necessary degrees that are there. So there is an Institute of Management throughout India. There are multiple branches in various states which offer you an uh, MBA programs. There is Faculty of Management Studies and uh, Business School. a uh, new delhi uh, there is uh, jamnanal bajaj institute of management studies in mumbai dy patel university school of management in Mum navi mumbai so and others as you can see on the screen you can take a screenshot of this these are along with these there are many other universities and colleges that offer a lot of programs to become a financial analyst um so now it's a look at overall job market in india so, as i mentioned career prospects uh, there is Finance is everywhere, every business. So there is a lot of opportunity for you to get uh, jobs there. And also, the kind of group depends on the level of experience that you gain. Uh, not only experience, your education that is there, uh, professional certification. And uh, with experience, as and when, as and when you uh, move ahead in the field, you can be promoted to senior, the senior finance. is for finance managers as well and there are other designations which are higher in profile which are with like portfolio manager or chief financial officer of as well so then there is let's look at salary and pay packages in india so when you start off the approximate salary of a financial analyst is 6.5 lakhs per year in india uh and along with experience and advanced degrees you can hire command higher salary up to 13 lakhs per year in india approximately okay a uh, work environment for a financial analyst generally uh, the office setting if you have to work in office settings there are uh, there is need for long hours of work uh, during reportings and budgeting time so that you might have to do overtime sometimes uh, there will be lot of dedication that will be necessary and also you will have to collaborate with other departments of the company and they will have to be informed of, about the financial state of the company so with marketing department or other management departments you will have to collaborate with them right so the career prospects for for financial analyst 
definitely positive. There's a lot of opportunity for growth and there is some level of international exposure also that could come your way. And there is a lot of uh, place for specialization areas as well. Okay. So these are my references and thank you very much for listening. Now my colleague Yukta will introduce you to another very interesting career of a social worker. Over to you, Yukta. Thank you. Thank you, Lavishri, for providing us such great insight on financial I'm Yukta, and I'm going to be talking about a entirely different career, which is social work. So students, are you interested in giving back to the society? Does helping others provide you with a sense of satisfaction? If yes, then social work might be the correct profession for you. So what is social work? Next slide, please. Lavishri, um, next slide. Right, thank you. So social work is basically a very diverse and essential field that focuses on improving the social structure of the society and enhancing the quality of life of individuals, partners, and communities. Social workers address a wide variety of issues such as poverty, homelessness, social services, and so on. Advocate for social justice and human rights, and helping best to create a better change in the society. Next slide, please. Right, so the minimum requirement to become a social worker in India is a bachelor's degree in social work or related field, such as sociology or human services. A master's degree is not mandatory, but is highly recommended to gain better career prospects. Uh, and after completing your master's, you can pursue a higher course with a PhD in social work. Additionally, it's also recommended to pursue internships and certifications to gain practical exposure in the field. Next slide, please. For students, this would be two of your primary responsibilities if you were to become a social worker. Firstly, you would be gathering information about your client to understand the best counseling plan or treatment for them. You would be incidental or very much important in supporting clients whenever they are going through difficult challenges in their lives, such as divorce, unemployment, or death of a loved one. Also, supposed to refer your clients to the necessary specialists or resources for assistance. Next slide, please. So as a social worker, you will be keeping a job of clients service, and you will also prepare reports for legal action if necessary. As a social worker, you may be advocating for your client and the community that you're working for. And you will always be working with law courts and for the betterment of the society. Next slide, please. So there are a number of soft skills that are required to become a good social worker. First is empathy, which will deeply understand the emotions of your client. There's advocacy skills, which will enable you to argue and represent your client when clients are vulnerable and are unable to advocate for themselves. It's very important to be culturally competent as a social worker because you will be working with clients from diverse backgrounds, and hence it's very important to be mindful or respectful of your client's beliefs and choices. Patience is another skill which is going to come in handy when you're working with other cases and clients take longer periods of time to make progress. Lastly, social workers are often threatened in situations that require them to take immediate action. Hence, critical thinking skills are must. Next slide, please. So, there are not as many hard skills required to become a social worker other than proficiency in laptops and computers knowledge of software as spreadsheet and database programs, and familiarity with PowerPoint and other kinds of presentation tools. Next slide, please. So these would be some of the areas that you'll be working in as a social worker. First is community development, wherein you will be working with local communities to identify their needs, utilize resources, and implement sustainable solutions. Another area is child welfare, where you will be responsible for promoting child protection, making sure that children have access to education, and you will be addressing issues related to child abuse and exploitation. In this area, education and youth services, where you will be supporting students who are undergoing academic, behavioral, and emotional difficulties, and you will also be working on initiatives that foster or enhance youth development. Next slide, please. As a social worker, you can also people uh, whenever they encounter a disaster or communities, whenever they 
face through the substance or whenever they have difficulty when it comes to these cases. And lastly, we have geriatric care, wherein you will be ensuring the well-being of the elderly and addressing issues related to mental problems and neglect. Next slide, please. All right, so these will be some of the positions that you will if you become a social worker. You can become a child and family social worker, wherein you will be assisting children and families, especially those where children are at a risk of abuse or neglect. If you want to become a counselor, you will be helping people to overcome their emotional, personal, and mental health. As a community worker, you will be assessing the health needs of the community and connecting them with various healthcare services. Then there are provision officers who guide and monitor offenders and prevent them from committing new crimes. And lastly, there are policy analysts who help to develop and implement policies for the betterment of the society. Next slide, please. So this would be, or this is how the typical work environment of a social worker would look like. Social workers can work full-time, part-time, or even remotely. A full-time social worker works for around 40 hours a week. As a social worker, you will be working in a variety of settings. Work is mostly to be office-based, but you may be required to visit clients and community homes. You are always going to be part of a multidisciplinary team, and you'll be working alongside other professionals, such as therapists, the police, legal services, education professionals, and so on. Next slide, please. So salary, like all other professions, depends upon the number of factors, qualifications, skills, designation, and experience. The average salary of a social worker in India is approximately around rupees 3 to 4 lakh rupees per annum, which can go up to rupees 7 lakhs. And entry level of the starting salary in the field is approximately around rupees 2 to 2.5 lakh. Next slide, please. So these are some of the top colleges and universities that offer courses in social work. The first three that I have mentioned are from Mumbai, which are Institute of Social Sciences, SND Women's University, and College of Social Work in Canada. And the following three are from outside of Mumbai, Christ University in Brandenburg, Delhi School of Social Work, which is Ahmed particular University of Delhi, and Jamia Media Islamic University in New Delhi as well. Next slide, please. So, students, by now you have like that the sole focus of social work is providing support. And as a social worker, you will be like a lasting impact on people's lives. The work that you do for them, to they do with the results of development. So, if that is something that is important to you, then you can definitely give this profession a go. Next slide, please. These are my references. Thank you so much for your time and attention. And now my colleague, Kashish Prasad, will be talking about another interesting career, which is physiotherapy. Thank you, Yukta, for your wonderful presentation. Hi, everyone. My name is Kashish Prasad, and I'll be talking about physiotherapy as a career in India. Next slide, please. So, physiotherapy is away from the term physical therapy, that assists patients in pain state health through physical interventions, exercises, diagnosis, and physical examinations. So physical therapy or physiotherapy is a form of therapy that cures any physical disability or abnormal function abilities through a set of physical exercises. So physiotherapists are recognized for laying out a well-structured therapy plan for their, for their patients alongside any other treatment if required. Next slide, please. So, before we move on to understand how you can become a physiotherapist, let us see what different types of physiotherapists there are. First is orthopedic physiotherapists, and they specialize in rehabilitation of deformities that affect bone, muscles, ligaments, etc. And they address injuries that, so, that are associated with your skeletal system and your spine. Uh, pediatric physiotherapists as the name suggests, are proficient in dealing with infants to teenagers and they recognize for their expertise in a range of issues that include posture, gross motor function, strength and flexibility in children. Moving on to sports physiotherapists, the most common type of physiotherapist, they treat uh, athletes and sports sense of enthusiasts who sustain injuries during their matches. Uh, next slide, please. 
neurotherapists focus on treating brain related disabilities such as stroke parkinson disease brain injuries concussions alzheimers and other neuro related disorders and they address both physical and the mental aspects of trauma conditions uh, affecting the nervous system cardiac respiratory physiotherapy specializes in treating impairments that are related to hearts your lungs or your respiratory system in the post pandemic context is physiotherapy play a crucial role in helping individuals recover from the respiratory issues that have arisen from conditions of covid-19 lastly physiotherapists it is a type of physical therapy that deals with issues concerning affected people and it uses various static conditions like body mass dizziness hearing and vision impairment as well next slide please so what do physiotherapists do so patients to relieve their mobility issues and pain and also restore mobility Take patients to perform various different physical exercises. They also keep track of their patient's health, identify, diagnose, and treat their patient's condition. Um, promote they promote active and a healthy lifestyle by creating their customized fitness plans and therapies, and design treatments to improve their functioning, prevent disability, and reduce extreme pain and enhance their mobility. They also prevent progressive loss of mobility because. Diseases, disorders, or accidents that they may have gone through. Next slide, please. So, to become a physiotherapist, there are a few skills and qualities that one must have. Uh, a few of them are interpersonal skills, communication skills, patience and tolerance. You must also have time management and organizational skills, as well as empathy skills, and most importantly, physical health and fitness. Next slide, please. So to become a physiotherapist in India, there are a few steps you need to go through. First is to clear the Class 12 examinations. Now, students who aspire to become physiotherapists need to clear their Class 12 examinations with the science field and with the specific uh, subject combination of physics, chemistry, and biology. And you must secure at least 50% of the aggregated subjects in your 12th board exams. Um, please note that if you do not. Uh, So, for at least fifty percent, you may not be able to sit for entrance exams for your um uh, for your physiotherapy courses. Uh, there are various entrance exams to become a physiotherapist. Some of them are NEET, CET, etc. But please note, a few universities do conduct own private entrance tests. Uh, the cutoff for the average expected NEET is around three hundred to four hundred out of seven twenty. Uh, the next step is to uh. And for the BSc or uh, BPT in physiotherapy, as per you can find relevant uh, recognized physiotherapy colleges. Uh, the fourth and the most important step is to gain experience. So you will have a six month compulsory in your bachelor's degree, and you can gain a lot of experience there. Next slide, please. So uh, please feel to take a feel free to take a part of this. There are few physiotherapy courses that you can pursue after twelfth, and also a few courses that you can do uh, post graduate courses. Uh, next slide, please. So the scope of physiotherapist is going very well in recent times, and therefore there are a number of opportunities for you. So after become after becoming a physiotherapist, you can employ yourself in various sectors like rehabilitation centers, defense and sector, in uh, clinics and uh, clinics of an orthopedic hospital, private clinics, sports centers, and universities. Next slide, please. So, um, the pay scale for a physiotherapist is pretty decent in India. The average salary of a physiotherapist in India is around three point six lakh Indian rupees per annum. It can hike around eight lakh Indian rupees per annum with amazing experience, and some hospitals also offer around Indian rupee Indian rupee packages as well. Next slide. So, uh, please feel free to take a screenshot of this. There are a few universities that offer bachelors of physiotherapy. Uh, to name a few are KGS Medical College in Mumbai, Lokmanya Tilak Municipal Medical College is right next to your school, Topiwala National Medical College, Somya Vidya Vihar University, Divya Patil University in Navi Mumbai, MGM University, and Tena Physiotherapy College. 
Next slide. So in conclusion, when you're choosing a career in physiotherapy in India, it opens doors to a dynamic profession with a lot of growing opportunities. As you consider your future, remember that in physiotherapy, you are not just treating the conditions of an individual, you are restoring hope and improving the well-being of that individual. So embrace uh, the journey into a fulfilling career in physiotherapy where every movement matters. Thank you for your time and consideration. Please. These are my references, and now I would like to hand it over to Kritika, who's going to talk about another interesting career in fashion designing. Thank you, Kashish. That was very informative. Uh, so, good evening, students. My name is Kritika, and I would like to talk to you all about fashion designing. So, if you're somebody who is very creative and who likes fashion and wants to, you know, experiment with, uh, clothes and you know creating your own style then this is the very right career choice for you guys next slide please okay so what is fashion designing so fashion designing is the applied art devoted to design of clothing and accessories so accessories can be uh, jewelry designing or shoes etc next slide please okay so what is the eligibility criteria so, uh, if you want to pursue a certificate or a diploma course, you need to have your 10th standard and, of course, 12th standard in any stream, be it art, or commerce. If you want to pursue your graduation in fashion designing, then, again, you need to be 10th and 12th standard in any stream. Uh, further, if you want to do a post-graduation, then you need to have your bachelor's degree in fashion designing. Uh, also, you need to give some entrance exams like uh, NID, NIFT, SEED, DAT. Uh, also, students uh, in this field, uh, you can get opportunities to visit abroad, especially to countries like pa France and Italy, where uh, fashion is quite popular. So, in order to with the people over there and talk to the people over there it would be beneficial if you can learn languages like french and italian next slide please okay so uh, what are some of the courses that you guys can pursue one is you can do bachelor's of design bachelor's of fashion technology bsc fashion design there are some certificate courses then if you want to go for your post graduation, then there is Masters of Design, Master of Fashion Technology, MNC Fashion Design, and also postgraduate diploma. Next slide, please. Okay, so when you become a fashion designer, what are some of the job responsibilities that you will have? So one you have to manage the entire design process right from the beginning till the end result. The next is you will need to conduct some market research to understand customers, to understand your competitors and all the upcoming trends that are coming up. Then you need to be able to select different themes. You need to be able to select fabrics and trims. So what are trims? Trims are basically the products or the materials that you would be required to uh, design your clothes. For example, buttons, uh, hooks, and zippers, etc. Uh, then you will also need to be able to create production sketches. You will need to collaborate with the technical designer. You need to review your fi final product before launching it into the market. And also then once the review is done, then you will need to present samples to the clients. Next slide, please. Okay, so when you become a fashion designer, what are the soft skills that you need to guide? One is you need to be very creative and be able to think a lot of out-of-the-box ideas. You need to be very proactive. So uh, in this field, uh, you will be working with a lot of people. So for that, you will need to have good interpersonal skills, uh, good communication skills. You need to be able to adapt well time management, you need to have good leadership skills, problem solving skills, team skills, and organizational skills. Next slide, please. So what are some of the technical skills? So one is students, uh, you will need to learn the computer-aided 
software and how to use the software to create your designs. Uh, you need to have good sewing skills, be it through hand or be it through machine. You need to be good at drawing. You need to have good design skills. Uh, you need to be good in Microsoft Excel. You need to have knowledge of Photoshop. You need to have fabric knowledge and also social media to uh, promote your designs. Next slide, please. Now, when you become a fashion designer, what is the scope? So students, as we all know, clothing is a very, very basic need for humans. So this field, there is tremendous scope of job and you will get tremendous opportunities to work. So one is you can become a textile designer. So a textile de designer works with different varieties of fabrics like cotton, silk to create the products. And you can become a fashion worker. That is, you need to be able to uh, uh, think on how to sell the product to the right market at the right time. The next is a technical designer, wherein you will be, um, you will need to draw your designs on the computer-aided software. Uh, then, fashion illustrator again you need to draw different sketches through hand. Uh, being a stylist. So stylist is somebody who helps people to, uh, you know, develop their personal or professional image by helping them look more fashionable. Then you can become a fashion blogger by uh, creating your own blog and posting about the different fashion trends or fashion shows that have happened. Then you can also become a fashion journalist. Next slide, please. So what are the career prospects? So where can you work once you become a fashion designer? What is you can work in wholesale and manufacturing establishments. You can work in the retail sector. You can work in theater and dance companies, design firms. You can also be uh, self-employed by starting your own brand. You can have your own boutiques. You can work in the film industry with all the celebrities. And also online shopping being quite popular these days. There is a lot of scope and career prospects in the e-commerce as well, where you will be able to sell your designs online. So on the screen, on the, on the image, you can see these are some of the top Indian fashion designers. There is Manish Malhotra, there is uh, Ritu Kumar, there is Anita Dongre, there is Tarun Tagiliani. All of these people are, have become quite successful in creating their own brand and they also work in all these uh, areas that I have mentioned in the slide. Next slide, please. What is the work environment like when you become a fashion designer? So the envir work environment is very exciting and it's very campus. Uh, you will get a lot of opportunities to travel in this field. Uh, sometimes you may work in large rooms with a lot of people around, but also even you can also work in small places as well. Uh, a lot of designers they work for 40 hours a week, but when there is a lot of demand, then you might have to work for more number of hours. Next, please. Okay. So when you become a fashion designer, the starting salary approximately from 2.5 lakhs to 5 lakhs for fresh graduates. Uh, as and when you gain more experience in the field, your salaries can range from 6 lakhs to 20 lakhs or even higher. And top designers, who are running their own businesses. Like I showed you some of the top designers in the country who are running their own businesses. They are earning uh, higher salaries. So you can also, uh, you know, earn more when you start your own brand and you become successful in business. Next slide, please. What are the perks of fashion designing or the advantages of becoming a fashion designer? This one is you get a salary, which is you get a quite a good amount of salary. Uh, the work environment is very exciting as you get opportunities to work in different areas, be it the theater, film industry, boutiques, etc. Uh, you get to meet uh, different individuals in uh, you know, from different walks of life, you will get to meet them and interact with them, work with them. Uh, you get a lot of opportunities to travel for fashion shows and conferences. You can also build your own brand. You can express your own unique style by being as creative as you can. Next slide, please. So, 
some of the trade institutes so when you want to pursue a career in fashion design you can check out these colleges uh, one is the national institute of fashion tech in mumbai the sdt university mumbai this whistling foods international which is also in mumbai so fire polytechnic mumbai this raja school of art rachna sansar national institute of design in ahmedabad and college of home science nirmala niketan can click a screenshot of your reference next slide please so to conclude this presentation i would like to conclude it with a quote by saying it's a beautiful thing when a career and a passion come together so students if you are passionate about fashion and creating your own style and not and you know rather than following different trends if you are passionate about creating your own then this can be the very right career choice for you guys next slide please so these are some of my references thank you so much and now i would like to invite my colleague radha but to talk about another interesting career on banking thank you kritika for this amazing presentation hello children i'm radha vikram but presenting you yet another interesting career called banking okay when you see this front page what do you notice atm bank or uh, atm machines vaults or home loans it just reminds you of the demonetization that happened few years ago yeah that was banking about next slide please so banking refers to the financial institution that provides various financial services to the general public the corporates and to the government they provide foreign exchange currency exchange safe keep values investment services in banking services yes next slide please so broadly we can see that classification of banks and the central bank we have commercial bank small finance bank payment bank corporate bank next slide please so children when you walk around the streets of mumbai don't you come across these logos yes we we're going to talk about this in details here is central bank they called reserve bank of india well what in the bank you have to be very vigilant because they have the only authority to issue currencies throughout india public sector bank they are called nationalized bank and they 75% of the banking business from this sector it's a very prestigious job working in public sector services private sector as you see it's a bank access bank they are called risk taking banks and since they take risk people are paid very handsomely in this bank but it comes to the top of the of work yes slide please coming to the foreign bank yeah city bank hsbc bank they are uh, they are what you say um, headquarters in the foreign country but they work here as a private entity and payment banks these are called the new age model banks they exist in mobile banking services next uh, next slide please So coming to the responsibilities, children, we have discussed. Next slide, please. So we are discussing here the general responsibilities which we must have. What we are banker, we have to manage. Previous slide, please. We have to manage financial transaction and provide financial advices to the clients, help them with investments and loans. We have to have good understanding of financial markets, banking regulation. And, and yes accounting principles that ever of omission commission you have to have good knowledge of bank reconciliation statements too right so now we are going to discuss about the scope of banking now for example if a bank teller you assess them and you are more more uh, taking dealing with cash and check so you have to be very alert in becoming a bank teller and mortgage loan officer have to assist the applicants in underwriting processes and secure mortgages next slide please so if you are a clerk i'm not getting the next slide any bad process uh I Put the next slide. I think it's something with your network. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Labashree. I've got it. 
So if you are a clerk, you have to be very efficient and proficient while working here because you are the best, you are the one who the most customer is going to interact with when they visit the branches. Probationary officer is one, is it's like an entry level position in the management of banks, and as a branch manager, you have to be very very vigilant because you have to have an eye of all the branch staffs, and you have to work on policies etc. Next slide, please. Oh, yeah, I think it's lagging. So. Here is investment banker and financial analyst. These are called the niche job profile in the banking industry. You have to have a master degrees here. My good friend Labashi explained you about the financial analyst. So what do they do? Assist them in like uh, uh, acquisitions, raising capital, uh, stock and all. So children, here we discussed about the scope of banking. Next slide, please. So now, are talking about the technical skills and soft skills. We require the skills to maintain productivity, to meet deadlines, and to prioritize tasks. Work ethic, why? Because we have to have a work life balance here. Computer skills, analytical skills, commercial, attention to detail, and accounting skills are some technical skills. Soft skills are stress management, time management, organization skills, communication, and resilience. Next slide, please. Okay, after discussing everything about the banking sector, career prospects. Apart from the career prospects, which is mentioned here on the page, children, you are actually planning for retirement when you work in the bank sector. Because when you opt for the pension, you get salary till the fag end of your life. And yes, after retirement also, you can work as a financial advisor to SMSA, that is small and medium scale enterprises. Isn't it very interesting? Yes. Next slide, please. So here is sort of like a hierarchical structure from clerk to financial risk manager. Salaries discussed here. The list doesn't end here. Then you have a deputy manager, regional manager, assistant general manager, general manager, the chairperson of the bank. Yes, you can have this post according to your dedication, resilience, and determination and intelligence. Next slide, please. I think we are coming to the qualification. Yeah. <clears throat> so, children, you have to follow this. You have to have a bachelor degree in banking and finance, BBA in accountancy and statistics, whichever is comfortable, or bachelor's in banking and insurance and cost accounting. Nextly, you have to prepare and appear for bank exam. Every bank have their own private exam, and there are private and public institutes which prep you up for these exams. I mentioned here CAIIB exams. These exams are given by the bankers while working, that is the employee, while working in the banking sector for employment and promotion purposes. Then, of course, you can pursue master's degrees like a MBA in banking and finance, master's in financial mathematics, master's in economics. You have to grab trending diploma or certificates in finance and accounting. And yes, when you are in a banking sector, you are working for you have to build a net network and gain relevant experiences. Next slide, please. Yeah, it's lagging. Next slide, please. So dear students, children, I have some of the colleges mentioned here, Wellinger Institute of Management and Development, SPJ Institute of Management and Research, Jamna Dal Bajaj, HR College, Nasim Mundi, SIS, our own SIS College of Commerce and Economics, KJ Sumaya Institute of Management, and RA Podar Colleges, which are in and around Mumbai. Next slide, please. Here are my references. So, children, take your time for the better future. Thank you for patience listening. Now, last but not the least, welcome my dear friend Pachi Jakob. She is going to talk about a very crucial career called counselor, which is a need for an hour for this generation. Thank you so much. Thank you, Radha, for the wonderful presentation. Uh, hello, students. My name is Prachi Radha. 
i am going to tell you about a culture which helps people in their social emotional and psychological problem it is a up growing profession known as a counselor let us see who is a counselor next slide please counselor is an expert who helps people of all ages to deal with emotional social developmental and other life concerns this professionals use a variety of strategy to help people to manage their behavior uh, behavioral issues and cope with the stress this is a pro uh, this professions build a healing and trusting relationships um, a counselor is a professional trained uh, expert who helps people overcome their issues and um, in a systematic um, sessions next let us see how a counseling session is performed so counseling is understanding the problem of the client uh, by actively listening to the client next so counseling is understanding the problem of the client by actively listening to the client and helping them to solve the problem in a therapeutic and curative manner by empowering and encouraging the client in a professional and confidential manner next next slide please so to become a counselor the qualification you need is you have, uh, you have uh, you if you have a bachelor's degree in relevant uh, field then you can do a master's degree in psychology counseling family therapy or school counseling you can also go for masters in human development or social work with special uh, specialization in counseling you can go for your post graduation diploma in counseling uh, post graduation diploma in academic and counseling next slide please the job responsibility of a counselor is you have to conduct the counseling sessions in school colleges ngos uh, you have to assess the students for their development then you um, you have to take programs and workshops to educate and inform the public about mental health uh, and you have to keep the awareness about mental health as a counselor you can work with families groups and individuals too you have to establish a comfortable and positive relationship with the client you have to keep confidential records of the students or of your clients you have to identify the problem uh, of the client you have to listen to the client actively and uh, in schools you have to take test a uh, psychological test and validate them next slide please so to become a counselor you need some soft skills and technical skills Soft skills are the skills which are involved in you. That is communication skills, uh, good communication skills, interpersonal skills. As you are working with a lot of people, so you need interpersonal skills, understanding of ethics, like time management, and you need patience, empathy, compassion, open mindedness, and problem solving skills, active listening to the client, and observation skills. Technical skills are the skills. to learn in your course and you apply in your uh, practice like diagnosing the problem and assessment of the problem then we have to do plan keep confidentiality uh, you need some computer skills research skills and uh, you have to conduct a lot of workshops next the scope of the job there is a wide scope of the job like a mental health counselor so mental health counselor works with people experiencing a wide range of emotional and psychological problems and uh, to bring out uh, effective change and enhance their well-being school college counselor so school college counselor works with uh, work with students in school and college and provide uh, academic and career and college ready readiness and social uh, emotional support then health counselor so a health counselor provides with a uh, motivation necessary to accomplish to accomplish their emotional and physical health goals uh, like curing from a disease um, such example is a uh, cancer then geriatric counselor geriatric counselor works with uh, older adults that is senior citizen they help they gives a uh, physical and uh, psychological assessment services to the older people then career counselor a counselor uh, helps people to begin 
change or advance uh, in their career then we have rehabilitation counselor so the uh, counselor helps people with physical mental uh, developmental uh, or emotional disabilities and to lead their life independently then uh, industrial counselor who are industrial counselor works with uh, employees in the industry the emotional outburst outburst of the employees to deal with their anger and frustration um, they are having in the industry um, then there is family and uh, marriage counselor so family and marriage counselor work um, pre marital and marital issues in marriage and family um, like solving their problems and building trust and a uh, healthy relationship at least next slide so your prospect as a counselor you can work in a variety of uh, agencies like school school and college uh, as a counselor school college counselor then universities as a professor when you are having a lot of de- uh, when you are having degrees and a lot of experience you can work as a professor in universities then there is government agency mental health centers private practices hospitals and jobs uh, private practices you can uh, open your own clinic and do private practices next the working environment of an uh, counselor uh, you can work uh, on you can do online counseling uh, as well as face to face counseling in online counseling is very convenient and cost effective for people uh, as it is active and global Uh, usually, a uh, counselor works indoor, but uh, he can also go outside for field visit. Uh, as you are working in an NGO and go- government agent, government organization, so the uh, if you are working in private practice, uh, you can have your own flexible schedule. Next slide, please. This salary and work. In India, average salary for a fresher is fifteen thousand to twenty-five thousand per month. Uh, the salary of a counselor in India can depend upon various factors like location, ex and experience. As you are well experienced, the salary also increases. Uh, it goes on two lakh, two lakhs to five lakhs per year. Next slide, please. Okay. So these are the colleges where you can uh, apply for this course. Like SIS Institute of Comprehensive Education, Xavier's Institute of Counseling and Psychology, SNDT Women's University, Tata Institute of uh, Social Studies, Mumbai University, Mithi Bai College of Arts, KJ Somaya College of Arts, Amity University, Jaipur College, and some of the colleges they have their own inter uh, internal exams. Next slide, please. Okay. to conclude a good counselor can be a guiding light that helps you navigate, navigate through the darkest storm all the best and thank you now i would like to invite my colleague to conclude for today over to you anil okay that that i hope you found that useful can you have the next slide please to conclude okay um I hope you find that useful. You got to do thousands and thousands of careers. Uh, again, we can only show you a few just to give you an idea of what life is like just working and what kind of job. Again, if you have questions, uh, you can email us at siscounseling at gmail dot com. Uh, I noticed there are a bunch of questions in the, in the chat. Uh, Abhi Mas, who is our guidance counselor at SIS, uh, will answer will address those questions. So over to Abhi. Okay, so first question uh, which was asked uh, is information about career science and data science. So, what kind of information they want about the course or about the job prospects or uh, job possibilities? That yeah. So, so whoever can... has asked this question, please put it in the chat. Okay. What do you want to know? <laughs> is the share market is best career? Uh, share market. Uh, if It is uh, well studied. I mean, if a person has proper degree in finance, uh, professional degrees like CA, CWA, MBA in finance, 
and then entering into the share market then yes it is very good career but without knowledge like if a person wants to do intraday trading then it's very very risky i would suggest not to that uh, there are people who have lost their lot of money in this so without knowledge one must not enter into the share market so we become degree and after that professional degree if they want to get into the share market careers uh, it is very uh, nice career okay uh, it is the best career i can say monetary in the terms of uh, money uh, next question is can you tell me about uh, the side of bio yes meet this is a question uh, tell me about the opportunities in the field of biology medical which does not uh, don't require need okay so just we heard about uh, physiotherapy Many colleges ask for need scope, but many private colleges they conduct their own tests, college level tests. So a student who if they want to, you know opt for this career, they can prepare for those tests and get into uh, physiotherapy. Uh, there are very few colleges they don't accept any uh, entrance exam on the basis of this much they give that one. That is also there, but they these are the private colleges and they have high fee structure. Uh, another career without need is nursing. Then BMLT SIS has uh, SIS college also has BMLT course. There uh, uh, need is not required. Then uh, there are a lot of courses in paramedical. I mean paramedics like uh, radiology is there, optimi optimetry is there. So I would uh, suggest the student to visit or to the medical colleges, paramedical colleges. One is in Gain uh, has a medical college. Another is Hilu, which is a private institute. We offer a variety of paramedical courses where we get the courses and they can choose from a variety of careers uh, from these college courses. Okay. Then uh, the next question is uh, any further queries on this? These two, three careers which I have explained. Any further doubts? Am I audible to her? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, then more job opportunities in computer science. Yes, computer science have lot of job opportunities, but they are, they are into automation, mostly into automation and robotics. Uh, so again, I don't understand this quite what the student wants to ask. I mean, is there job opportunities in computer science? Is this question or what kind of job opportunities there in computer science? Again, what is the please. Sorry? Okay, next question is what are the colleges which provide PCB for 11 and 12? Uh -huh. This question is asked by Vivek Shin. So, all the colleges who offer science stream have PCB group for 11th and 12th. B is biology is optional. They can choose from uh, computer science, IT or biology. Sometimes geography is also available in some colleges. Students have to choose. But C is available in all the colleges to, uh, to those who are affiliated to home pages. Then uh, next question. Okay, uh, courses related to graphics and VFX. I think yesterday we had uh, animation and TV uh, presentation, right? So if you have taken their screenshots, you will come to know what kind of courses uh, are available. But bachelors in mass media uh, would be sufficient for this. And say multiple private institutes to offer six months or one year, six months to two years courses, depending on the, you know, uh, difficulty uh, and advancement of that uh, course. So, um, you can opt from the institutes. We can do personal business. You can look at the 12th career. Yes, this also has the science PCB.
any more questions i hope i have answered each and every question if anyone does have any more questions uh, email is here this email will be available till 20th of january you can send in your uh, queries to this email and we will get back to you okay so this was aditi uh, rajadrak who is the counselor and career counselor at uh, sis uh, college of arts and commerce she just told you we will get back to you with your queries so then now yes who had asked me the uh, uh, microbiology and biotechnology yes in biology and microbiology these two courses are also very good okay yes Bye. yes okay thank you aditi so in conclusion these two career panorama was was a journey into the future into your dreams into the world of work these two days were day of exploration learning and inspiration so i hope you children step into this journey with open minds and open heart and discover learn and dream big and find the career which is perfect for you now over to our director dr vidya satish who will formally close the panorama uh, thank you people uh, i would like to uh, thank principal ma'am for giving our students an opportunity to conduct this career panorama and uh, an overview of the different uh, careers in the two, in the last two days that was on 12th as well as today uh, thank you dear students uh, for being here and um, you know listening to different uh, career opportunities and also trying to understand them asking questions writing questions on the chat box really appreciate your uh, participation in this Uh, to a really great extent thank you to the teachers to principal reja ma'am the other teachers who were also present and um, uh, children uh, both days uh, had uh, as i told you earlier uh, you can see it uh, on youtube it will always be there so you can look at the presentation and in case for you, uh, youtube is convenient you can stop and you can go back and you can listen it again and uh, uh, in that manner you will be able to hear it and any queries that you have you can write to us i think in a week's time or uh, that the time that is given and we are at uh, the sis college of arts science and commerce the science west college in case anybody is interested especially in careers in counseling teacher training or in special education of course there are courses that you can do after graduation and there are courses that you can do like teacher training after graduation so you can visit us also and uh, we will be happy to help each and every one of you uh, thank you again everybody and um, wishing each and every one of you uh, all the very best there are nine uh, standard children and there are ten standard children also so wishing all of you the very best in your exams in your academic life in your personal and professional life and may god bless you and may you choose the right career and uh, good go in whichever career uh, that you take so what is important is choosing the right career so put in a lot of effort speak to people listen to these kind of talks and understand and also understand what is what you are good at your skill set so that you can to be easy every presentation our students have built a lot about the skills uh, that is required both the technical skills as well as the soft skills please go through presentations uh, in a very calm manner so that you can understand and best uh, wishes to choose the right career all the best everybody Thank you very much once again for your patience listening. Good evening everybody and have a nice evening.